Welcome to the Page Family Homestead. My name is Peggy Jean. Today, because it's after Christmas, so why wouldn't I make this now, right? <laughs> We're going to be making a traditional Christmas pudding, a recipe that I got from a good friend at Tomorrow a Day Farms, but we're going to do something a little different. We've already had our Christmas pudding and it was fabulous, hence why we're doing it again. What I'm doing though is a twist. This will be gluten free. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so let's get this done. It doesn't take a lot, really. Um, it's got half a cup of shredded apple. I just used my shredder. Um, what do you call it? <laughs> okay, it's greater. Grater. Thank you. So I got what, half a cup of apple, one cup of shredded potato, and one cup of shredded carrots. We put that all into the bowl. And we're going to add to that a half cup of brown sugar. We make our own brown sugar. I have a DIY video coming with a lot of hints and tips for everybody. So we put that in, give it a little mix. Now this does take some time to cook. We're going to steam it. And I don't have a steamer, so I got inventive. Use your imagination. You want to get something done, you'll find a way. I'll show you my little setup in a minute. The pan I like to use, the pot, it has a goose broth in it right now, so we can't use that. Okay, so in this, this does require suet, food grade suet. You want to go to a reputable butcher, see if you can't get organic suet. We have an awesome butcher that we go to. Um, he gave me enough, actually he didn't even charge me, so hey, Merry Christmas. Um, since we bought our organic goose from him, he gave us the suet for free. So I've got it dated, uh, vacuum packed, boom, it's in the freezer. We're going to enjoy it for next year too. So in here is three quarters of a cup of suet. And like I said, this isn't the stuff you give to the birds. This is the food grade suet. Just going to mix with each layer so it makes it a little easier throughout. This is so unbelievably good, but I wouldn't do it without the suet. I remember somebody in the family making this, and it was actually a flame. I don't know if I'm gonna talk a lot or not. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so in this, we are going to mix in one cup of breadcrumbs. Now, like I said, this is gluten-free, so we are using a gluten-free breadcrumb. I'm going to mix that in as well, get everything incorporated. Now in here I have one cup of currants and on the bottom one cup of raisins. Okay, we'll just toss that all in. This pudding is going to wow everybody at your table if you haven't already started this tradition. A traditional Christmas pudding will have 13 ingredients. If we count the um, raisins and currants as one, we can cheat and say this does too. And that was to symbolize Jesus as well as his 12 disciples. We're just up on one ingredient, <laughs> but we're not traditional. Okay, so we got that all in. So now I've got in here, if you want to zoom in there, we've got one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon salt, we use sea salt, um, one teaspoon, no, sorry, 1.5. So one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of allspice. And then we have half a cup of gluten-free flour. Now I've never made this gluten-free version before, so <laughs> Rob, I hope it works for you. 
we have a very dear family member who is celiac and that just made a beautiful mess who is celiac and can't enjoy a lot of the treats that are put out for Christmas so I'm hoping I'm so hoping this works for him and that I have the nerve to flame it for him when I serve with it we will be serving a butter rum sauce I'm going to put the recipe for that in the description of the video hit that little uh, triangle on the side of the title and you'll see the little menu pop up with the uh, recipe card index there and any links that I might add so when you serve you also um, you want to re-steam it just before serving I'm not I'm making this and I'm putting it in the fridge for one day um, if Rob isn't delayed we will have it then um, if he is delayed, I'll toss it in the freezer until he can come, and then we'll just thaw it out and re-steam it. Heat up that uh, buttered rum sauce, and oh, I'm telling you. So I got a lightly coated pan here. I sprayed it. Just put everything in here. Oh, the smell is just so heavenly. This was such a hit at Christmas. Our guests just adored it. Okay, we're gonna flatten this out. I just wanna go over the ingredient list. So half a cup of apple grated, one cup of potato grated, one cup of carrot grated, half a cup of brown sugar, mix. Three quarter cup suet in and mix. One cup breadcrumbs, one cup raisin, one cup currant, and then our spices, and we're good to go. Okay. I'll have that all typed out, don't worry. So I'm just pressing this down and I'm not wasting any of that. So what I did is I pre-cut, just cut a square or you know, rip off a square, fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, lay it like half wise, <coughs> cut it. I cut it to overshoot the rim a little bit so I can give a little lift like this. And then another piece, I've made a little lasso. A real cowboy would laugh at my term for that. Thank God we're not no Alberta. There's no real cowboys here. Whoop. Yeah, this is where <laughs> two hands from another body coming. Sewed around, pulled it tight, wrapped it once more around, and then we're going to take this string, watch me pop it off, and we're going to tuck it into the double, it looks like a single layer, so just, my hands are so weak. Nope. Really, this isn't as difficult as I'm making it. There we go. What we've got is a little handle. Yeah, ingenious, right? I didn't invent it. We'll pretend I did. Okay, so we got our handle. I'm just going to trim off the excess. Like I said, we're going to steam this. I'm going to let it go in the pot there. I'll show you my get up. And we're gonna let it go for three hours. We're gonna bring it to a boil and then turn it down to a nice low simmer. It's, it's the steam that's cooking this, guys. So I'll bring it right back. Okay, so we're ready to steam. So I've got my temperature. Mine goes up max, of course, is at nine. So mine's set for eight because I do wanna bring this to a boil. So, <laughs> No steamer. I've got my um, 
my trivet, you call it, for the pressure canner with some of my canned rings on the top. I don't know what you're going to use. Be creative if you don't have a steamer. Maybe another little pot upside down that this can sit on. You want to put that water in there. You want to keep an eye because that water, every hour I'm going to come back, once it starts to boil, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer. And then that way, um, every hour I'll just quickly take a peek and make sure that the water level hasn't gone down. If I need to add some, I'm just going to boil some on the little kettle and throw it in. But two to three hours, we'll check, you know, periodically to see as it gets closer to three. So say goodbye. Next time you see it, it's hi. Okay, so it's been three hours. We're going to unveil it together. Now, I used this slightly. I don't trust it. So I just used it a little bit just to tug it up so I could grab it with the, the pot holder. Don't trust it. Unless you've got really good twine. This was just embroidery thread. Okay, let's unveil. Oh my. That just looks too good. It smells. Oh, Rob, you're going to love this. Look out, look at it. Still beautifully moist. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If I was serving this today, I would of course just slide a blade going around and just kind of invert it out onto a plate. Now on top of that, what we did is we served that with a hot buttered rum. And oh, so good. I doubled the recipe. I'm glad I did because there's always leftovers and they want more. So what I used uh, was, and I'm doubling. So you, this, this recipe, recipe should be actually half, okay? So you're going to use two cups of firmly packed brown sugar. You're going to use one cup of butter you're going to mix the two of them together and heat. But don't boil it, just like mixed together well, okay? Heated through. On that, you're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon. Um, use a balloon whisk and just whisk that together, or a fork if you prefer. Um, once you've done that, you're going to trickle in one half cup of heavy cream or whipping cream. And you're gonna just keep stirring that, you know, Oh, maybe two minutes. You're going to do it in total for five. So just keep stirring at a low simmer. The last three minutes, when you hit the two minute mark, you're going to throw in two tablespoons of dark rum. Oh, I'm going to cook that for another three minutes. It thickens up slightly. And then you can just drizzle that over top of your uh, Christmas pudding. Now, I'm going to put this away because I'm intending this to be... Um, loved by Rob, <laughs> our gluten-free guy. So I'm going to freeze it until I know he's coming. Um, the day before, I will take it out and just thaw it in the fridge. And an hour before we are serving, or an hour while we're eating dinner, so for about an hour, I'm going to re-steam it just to heat it through. It's already cooked. And then I can present it with the heated rum sauce as well. I hope you try this recipe. It is, oh, what, did, what, what was it you called me after tasting this? Perfect, Peggy. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Tomorrow a day farms. Now, this is the gluten-free version. Um, she has her, I believe, grandmother's version. So, please do give it a try. And to make it for regular, just substitute the gluten-free products for the regular. You're good to go. Enjoy.